Hi, my name is Jake Vlasenkepper, Director of Agronomy and Research here at Liquor Grow. Hi, I'm Katie Hess, Director of Sales and Marketing here at Liquor Grow. Dr. Jake, it's nice to see you standing upright this morning. Yep, you bet. After last night's wind event, you know, they talked about it all day. They talked about it for the last few days. We had this huge wind event coming. Um, I know by our house, they were clocking 60 to 70 mile an hour winds. As it crossed the river, those increased, I think you said maybe closer to 100 in some there, spots in Illinois. According to the news last night, there was a radar estimated wind of as high as 110 mile an hour. I think I was in bed by that point. Once it crossed <laughs> our house, it was like, we're done. Um, thankfully, you know, this corn here where we're at north of Davenport still looks really nice. It's standing very nicely, but we have already had reports of corn that's been lodged. And so when you think about lodged corn, Jake, what should we be thinking about this time of the year? Yeah. So. I don't mean to go to the negative right away, but... That's why you got me. I bring you back around. <laughs> if you have corn that that lodges at VTR1, so tasseling, you know, uh, silking, you could be looking at yield reductions as much as 40 to 45%. And what okay. causes that yield reduction? Yeah, there's a couple things. Number one, you know, physically, when the crop falls over at this stage, you're going to have leaves laying over top of silks, okay? So therefore, the silks some silks on some plants won't get fully pollinated so you just won't have seeds in okay the other thing is this time right now is the most critical time for seed set yes i was actually um walking some corn late yesterday afternoon before the the winds came in and it was about 25 percent um pollinated at that point so yeah. i know it's critical right now absolutely so if you have you know any photosynthetic stress would reduce potential seed set at this point in time and lodging and not intercepting sunlight and perhaps the plant trying to stand back up would all be considered photosynthetic stress so when the plant is stressed at this time big yield reductions can occur so it's the significant stress on the crop not intercepting sunlight like it like it should be efficiently secondly it's just a lack of potential pollination from other plants covering up silks yeah and um jake when you think about lodging, is it, what do you do? Do you go look for rootworms? Are you looking at your book to say, okay, was this susceptible, this hybrid um, yeah. for lodging scores? What are you looking at? Yeah, Katie, I think that, you know, if, if it were me, I mean, God forbid you don't have lodging, but if you do, probably don't want to look at it, but you probably need to, okay? So, because you want to ask the question, what caused the lodging? Was it just 110 mile an hour winds? That's possible, right? It could just be root lodging from excessive winds. Um, but perhaps maybe there was some rootworm injury that you weren't aware of, right? I've been in two different fields so far this year that were rotated acres and there was significant rootworm injury. Corn falling down, corn didn't look quite, quite right, we get to digging roots and there's rootworm injury. So we must have had a variant population of westerns or an extended diapause northern. You definitely want to know that's happening, right? Perhaps it's a continuous cornfield and you thought your traits were working, you thought your insecticide was working, but you've got significant root injury and that was a cause, a contributing factor of the lodging. Of course it was the wind, but it was also the rootworm feeding. The other thing that I've noticed this growing season is that there's a lot more, there was a lot more sidewall compaction and therefore hatchet roots or mohawk root syndrome from planting too wet. Tomahawk. Yeah. Tomahawk, yes. Tomahawk root syndrome from planting too wet. That, you know that can clearly be a cause of lodging if all of your roots are you know down the row instead of spread across the row sure. so um, you need to kind of understand why lodging happens so therefore you know next year we can think about okay what can we do to reduce lodging going forward okay you know we've got some planes flying in the background even I'm not sure you can see it but I can hear them um, is fungicide something that's going to help this lodging once it stands back up because corn at this point is going to try to stand back up that's actually a great question katie so um we didn't even plan this that that's a great question and so that wasn't super clear but in the, in the duratio year i think it was 2020 we made a lot of observations and what we've seen very clearly is that after the after corn tassels it will not stand back up lodging prior to tasseling the corn will try to stand back up but after the corn is tasseled it generally will not stand back up and we don't 100 percent know why but we think it has something to do with the plant recognizes that all energy needs to be reallocated to the ear 
and standing back up requires a lot of energy so it must be a protective thing but we definitely notice that in ratio year so if the corn is tasseled or beyond tasseling it probably won't try and stand back up it may put out brace roots to try to prop itself up where it's at but you're probably not going to see that classic um, Gooseneck. goosenecking to feeling. try to stand back up yeah okay so you kind of dodged my question there on the fungicide is fungicide a good option for people who have lodged corn <sighs> I think it depends on the severity of lodging. You know, if it's lodged a little bit, I would continue with the normal plan. We've had really good weather. We've had, you know, generally up to this point, we've had really good seed set. I think there's going to be some crazy high yield potentials, thankfully. And if that's the case, we need to protect the canopy. If you've got a field that's just leveled, you know, I'm not sure a fungicide is going to help you in that case. Sure. So, Jake, um, you know, we've both been out walking a little bit of corn here. And what are you seeing on severity of diseases starting to pop up? Is there anything out there? You know, we talk about latent periods on tar yeah. spot. Start, you know, it looks really good so far. It does. I, and I'm quite surprised it's hanging in there like it does. Heck, it has been. Um, yeah, I've seen a little bit of gray leaf spot, seen a little bit of northern getting fired up. I have personally not seen any tar spot. I have I've either. heard of a couple of fields, but I have personally not seen of any. I guess I, I expect it to get pretty significant. When I came home for the weekend, I dumped out a half inch, Katie. Two nights ago, I dumped out two inches at my house. Yeah, and then this morning, I dumped out an inch and a half. Yep, so we're about in the same boat. You, you can't tell me with all these rain events, disease isn't going and to be an And this morning, issue. the last few mornings, it's just super foggy. Oh, and it was so humid yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it just seems like um, we're having these foggy mornings earlier in July. You know, you often think about August for these foggy mornings, but it burns off fairly fast, but it's very tropical feeling. We're still on the track of all signs point to a very significant foliar disease year in corn and soybeans. So, so if a farmer is on the fence, you know, should we be spraying, should we not be spraying? You know, corn is not the best commodity price right at the moment that like we've seen in the last few years. The crop looks super good. You know, what? what's your risk? I, I, think, I think the risk is, you know, I'm gonna say this in a uh, maybe not so, positive spin but let's be honest in some cases we're probably hoping to break even right but if you lose 50 bushel because you have significant gray leaf spot you know now you're now you've lost money right so i think we've got some incredible yield potentials i think disease is, is going to be a significant threat i just think if there's a year to spray fungicide in both corn and soybean this one's shaping up to be the one where you want to protect the yield that you currently have because we have some really good yield potentials here in eastern Iowa. I know this has been a little tougher up in north central Iowa, but here in eastern Iowa and northwest Illinois, you know, if you didn't have lodging, you've got some excellent yield potential. We've got some really good weather for this critical period of pollination here. And Jake, you know, if, you're, if your wallet's getting a little thin, thin this summer and you're thinking maybe I don't want to spray every acre, I mean, you probably want to target those corn on corn, corn acres. acres. Anything that's had a manure application usually seems to benefit. Anything that has to stand late into the season. Anything that has poor disease ratings. Poor disease ratings. So, you know, you can really go through the checklist and we can throw that checklist up on the screen right now and say, yep, 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 yep. Maybe these are a couple of fields that I should be targeting and just focus on those this year. Maybe not every acre. Absolutely. Thanks, Jake, for being with us today and hope all of you folks are um, having a good day and hopefully your corn was not lodged and you survived the storms already. Stay in the know with Liquid Grow.